Chris, and welcome back to TheBasis.net. Today, we're starting week number two in this new quest called The Game of Tones. And uh, today, we're going to be talking about string types, which is another question that I get asked about all the time, which is, you know, what um, what brand of strings? What, what gauge of strings? What material are they made of? All the different types of strings. And to be honest, I almost kind of felt like, well, maybe I don't need to cover this. Maybe this is too basic. But then I thought back, you know what? I played bass for like 15 years before I ever knew that there were different types of strings. <laughs> now granted, I started playing when I was like seven years old. So it was like, I was like 22, 23 before I re ever heard about flat wound strings. And wait, there's nickel wound also? And this, or which ones have I been playing? Like, I don't know. I just bought the same back every single time. And so uh, the more I think about it, it actually is really good to cover this stuff. If you're not aware of it, cool. I'm going to put some things on your radar for you to go to check out. And if you do know about different string types, and uh, maybe this is going to give you some food for thought or some other ways to think about how you're utilizing your strings. And before we get too much further into this, I just want to make sure you know that pre-sales are still going on for the limited run anniversary edition vinyl pressing of my album, When Will Then Be Now. There's there's still time for you to hop on that. There's a link popping up right now. You can check it out. I recommend the deluxe bundle because it's got the most value to it. It's a discounted rate on the on the vinyl record. It also comes with a free month here at thebasis.net. Uh, it comes with a t-shirt of your choice from the Basis store, which you could buy this one right here that I'm wearing or any of the other ones that you see me wearing. And also comes with the jam tracks and the play along files for every song on the record. So excellent value, uh, the deluxe bundle. Now, let me also say that this video is not going to be a comparison between this brand of strings and this brand of strings. Yes, I know there's a lot of companies out there and they all use a different technology and they have different types of strings. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware of those things. That's way too specific. This is going to be much more broad. And plus, I don't have all those brands of strings and all the different types. That would be way too much. <laughs> I don't have that kind of time to do this. So, we're get, if you want to know what brand of strings we are going to use today, they're going to be the Dario because I've played the Dario strings my whole entire life. Every pack of strings I've ever bought were the Dario. Uh, I know how they sound. I'm very familiar with them. I know how they're going to react. I know how they feel. And plus, they sound great. So those are the ones that we're going to be using today. So today we're going to go over three different types of strings. I know that there's way more than three types of strings out there, but I only have these three. These are the three that I use. And in fact, of every bass that's in my house. Yeah, all of them are strung up with one of these uh, three types of strings. So I'll, I'm will i going to show you what they are, how I use them, and why I use them. So I guess the first one we should start with are round wound strings. And the reason why is because they're the most common ones. They didn't come first. Flat wound strings uh, were initially um, what you, if you bought a bass at a store, it had flats on it. It wasn't until I think the late 70s or the early 80s where round wound strings kind of took over. I wasn't around back then, so I can't tell you, but from the research that I've done, I read that John Entwistle was kind of the first bass player to jump on the bandwagon playing round wound strings. Uh, Roto sounds are what he played, and um, every bass player just kind of ever since <laughs> followed him in that. And the, um, you, you know, ba basically they have the most sustain. meaning that the note lasts the longest. It's also the reason why they're called round wounds rather than flat. Flat wounds are flat to the touch. These ones are kind of, well, you can hear this if I grab a pick and I do, you know, the infamous pick slide. There, There's a material, a steel or metal of some sort, I don't know, round and wound the string, and that apparently makes it last longer. I'm not, I'm not a doctor. I don't <laughs> know why, but that's how they get their name, round wound strings. So like I said, they're probably the most common string out there. If, if you were to buy a new bass off the wall or, or something, it's probably strung up with, with round wounds. And as far as I know, there's really two different materials that they will wind the string with. One is stainless steel and the other is nickel. I do not like stainless steel strings. I always play nickel wound. And that's a personal preference. The the sound, the difference in, in sound between the two is that stainless steel is probably a little bit brighter <clears throat> which probably means that it has a longer lasting lifespan. Maybe because it starts out brighter, so it gets deader longer down the line. I don't know. That might not be true. Uh, but I do know that stainless steel strings have a brighter sound, so a lot of rock bass players like stainless steel. However, um, 
I just, I hate the way that they feel. It, uh, as I'm playing the bass, it feels like my fingers are sticking to the strings, like, 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 like they're Velcro or something. I'll bet it has something to do with the sweat in my fingers and the oxidization of the uh, metal. I'm not a doctor, so don't quote me on that. But I just know as I play stainless steel strings, maybe the first time it's fine, but I put the bass away, I come back to it tomorrow, and it's like, ew, like it's just, I gotta go wash my hands afterwards. I, I cannot stand it. So nickel wound strings, again, they're not quite as bright. have no problem getting some some brightness out of them uh top end i mean it's just it's fine it's great i don't have any issues uh playing nickel wound strings and and again i like the way that they feel these strings are probably about a week old that, that's that's pretty old for me and and again they don't feel nasty they're, they're not all oily or sticky on my fingers and so that's the reason why i play nickel wound strings so the next type of string we're gonna talk about is, is the flat wound string. And here's an interesting thing, is I always thought that flat wounds were a different sound, when actually round wound strings were the different ones. Because <laughs> flat wounds came first. These are the OG, this is what we had first. So if you think of those iconic records that were made in, in, in the sounds of bass from the 50s and the 60s and the early 70s, that's what flat wound strings sounded like. It wasn't until, I think it was rock and roll. I think it was guitar players, post Jimi Hendrix, when guitar players were, you know, hanging on the notes forever and, and that technology kind of made its way on the bass <laughs> at the same time. Again, I wasn't there, that's just a theory. But still, the sound of the flat wound string is a pretty old school one. So it's got a very mellow tone. And this is the same bass I was using a second ago. And I didn't touch the volume or the tone knob. It, everything is identical. And so it just kind of has this natural whoom, 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 whereas the other one had a zing and an attack to it. And actually, here's a funny thing is the older that flat wound strings get, the better they sound. So uh, when I first became a D'Addario artist, they, they sent me a gift package. They sent me five strings presets on the house. And so they sent me a set of these chromes. And so I tried them out. I was like, oh man, this is great. These are those same strings from 10 years ago. <laughs> I haven't changed them. I, I don't need to boil them. I didn't need to replace them or do anything else because the older they get, the better they sound, the more dead they are. And in fact, uh, here's another story that I heard from uh, from Phil Chen. He was talking about James Jamerson. And he said that, uh, that Jamerson broke his his one of his strings, his G, I think. And so he mailed it back to LaBella. LaBella was, was who made his strings. LaBella called him up and they said, we're so sorry, we're, we're going to send you an another one right away. And he was like, no, no, I, I mailed you my string. I want you to fix it. <laughs> so I don't want a new one. I want you to fix this one and then send it back to me. Because in his whole career, he had the same set of strings. He never changed them. And so that's just that just blows my mind. That's so cool. But so that's a rad thing about flat wound strings. Order one set and you're good. They're just going to sound better over time. So like I said, I like to use flat wound strings on anything that sounds old school. There's a record I did mm, maybe three years ago called the Dread Pirate Roberts uh, with, with my friends Bill Worrell and, and Brian Bothwell. And it was kind of like a Hendrix, mm, John Mayer trio sounding kind of, uh, you know, 70s power trio kind of band and so i used this exact bass with these exact strings and it was it was awesome that the, the flat mon strings totally brought the character that i want in fact i'll play a clip for you right now here check it out And a cool way to even uh, to accentuate the sound of the flat mount string even more. Uh, this is a bass that I have set up. It's just a, like a four hundred dollar Mexican Fender bass because I wanted one that looked like the Jamerson bass. Um, and I shoved foam underneath the bridge here. This is a trick that a lot of guys did back in the '60s to get like even just more of a dead just boom 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 boom. In fact, that Jackie Wilson bass line.
So this bass stays uh, set up the whole entire time with flat wound strings um, and a sponge underneath just to give it even more of that dead flat wound old school goodness. Now, if you don't have multiple instruments, for instance, I just said that bass has flats on it all the time. I never take them off. This one, I had to take the round wound strings off and put the flats on. So you know, it only took five minutes. I have a drill gun, uh, a power drill with the uh, tuning key drill bit on it. So it didn't, you know, it took a couple of minutes. But still, I had to pause my session. I had to go and do that. So if you want to just have a bass that stays round wound with flats the whole time, that's cool. If you don't want to do that, you can still kind of get the sound of a flat wound string by doing palm muting. These are flats, so it's going to be a bit biased, but. By laying my palm on the bridge and, and striking with my thumb, it kind of gets a very similar sound. And again, I know these are flat wound strings, so that was, <laughs> was totally biased. But if I still had round wounds on here and it was like, I was on a, I was playing a cover band gig, right? And a Motown song comes up. Well, I'm not gonna grab a different bass or go change my strings really fast. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna palm mute it and, and make it happen. But if I'm tracking a whole record that way, or if I'm playing with a band that the whole entire set needs that sound, I'm just gonna put flats on it. So buy a pair of flats, a pair, a set. Buy a set of flat wound strings and you can have them forever and put them on your bass whenever you need them. Or like I said, I just bought a cheap Fender that just has flats on it the whole entire time. And so I've always got one of those handy. So, so these are called uh, tape wound strings or nylon wound strings. It's a steel string, I imagine, coated in nylon, kind of like a classical guitar, I guess. And it's a really, really interesting sound. If I could describe it, I mean, you just heard it. If I could describe it with words, it kind of has the um, the sustain and the warmth of a flat wound string, but you can also dig into it. And kind of get some of the some of the bite like you would get from a um, uh, from a round wound string. It's a really interesting sound. And honestly, I had never even heard of it, never given it any thought until I saw Yannick Guizdala playing uh, on, a, on a P bass like this. And actually, I've never heard these strings on a P bass before. I have these on my Squire Bronco bass and on my fretless five string, and I'll, I'll tell you why in a second. Um, and so I put them on this P bass to, just to keep things all the same. Everything we've listened to today was the same strings on the same bass, so nothing was biased. And uh, actually, it's funny, this this G isn't long enough. Um, it was from a different bass where it, I can't actually play it because because uh, the string isn't long enough to, for, for this bass. So anyways, like I said, I've never heard it on, on this bass before, but it's <laughs> it looks already coming up. Uh, but again, they just have a really interesting sound. And like I said, I heard Yannick play them on a P bass. And so I bought a couple sets to put on my short scale bass, which again, I just think it's, it's a really unique sound, just a different tone. You heard it in last week's video. I was like, maybe you should have something that sounds like a toy. And it was that instrument. Um, and I also keep them on my fretless bass. I have a fretless Carvin Icon. And I used to have round wound strings on there and I switched to these guys. And here's the thing, uh, round wound strings will eat away at your frets and eat away at your neck uh, because of, of how they're wound up. So if you look at, if you have a fretless bass and you take and, and you have round wound strings on, if you pull the strings apart, you're gonna see lines in your bass and over time, uh, the, the, they cut into the neck. You'll have to get your neck refinished or you'll have to get your frets uh, filed down and, and, and refinished kind of thing. With flat wound strings, you don't have that issue or at least not nearly as bad. And same thing with these because they're smooth to the touch. And so I put them on my fretless bass because I didn't want, I still wanted some of the zing that like a round wound string had, but I wanted something that was smooth that wasn't gonna kill the neck. And so I put, um, I put these strings on my fretless bass to, to, to help preserve the neck and keep some of the life in the string. And then, like I said, they're, they're on the Bronco bass just so that it's it's something different. But, you know, having them on the P bass sounds really awesome too. So anyways, there you have it. That's the basics of string theory. Ah, that is indeed laughable. Actually, string theory is a theoretical framework in which the point like particles of particle theory are replaced by... Uh, one-dimensional objects called strings. It describes how these strings propagate through time and space and uh, interact with each other. Quite so, quite so.
Well, thank God it's actually not that complicated. You can use all these generalizations that I showed you today. Uh, again, it's not that scientific, but, but it'll help you travel down the direction that you want, depending on the level of brightness you want, the feel you want, the vibe that you're after, or the amount of decay. Um, and keep in mind also that when you're trying out new tones, be it new strings or basses or something, and I think I said this last week. Okay, yeah, I said this last week, and I was like, I've been playing this Stingray for like the past two months because I want to learn the voice of it. I want to learn where it fits in, and I want to learn its sound. And so the same thing with strings. Take these strings out with you on a gig. In fact, I, well, if I didn't have this guy floating around, I, <laughs> I actually, but now I got a three-string bass. I actually would take this bass out tonight. I have a gig. It's a Wednesday night. And I have a gig tonight, and, and, and I would play these strings, all, the whole entire set, just to get an idea of what the voice is. And if I keep running back to my amp and, and changing stuff, it's like, okay, so apparently these uh, have this type of sound, or they have this type of effect. You know what I mean? So everything that you're doing, if it's a new amp, a new bass, uh, new speaker cabinets, or, or new strings, new effects pedals, take them on the gig. Try them out see how it works, see what it's adding, see what it's taking away, make those types of notes, and then you either are getting closer to, yes, this is awesome, uh, this is more particular, or I'm never going to use this because I just hate the way that it sounds. So if you take anything away from this lesson today, um, take this home, okay? If, you're st if your stings are stricky, Strings are if your strings are sticky, <laughs> wow, uh, switch from stainless steel to nickel. Y you'll love it, trust me. Buy a set of flat wound strings. They're good to just have around or or buy another cheap bass and, and keep them on there and you're ready to go. But it's just, it's always a cool sound to have on top. And then three, just, you know what? Experiment with some different ones. These are tape wounds. Again, I had never tried them before. Uh, you, you could try what are called half wound strings. Uh, I have no idea what that is, but it's like a blend between round wound and flat wound, I guess. Uh, there's such thing as balance tension. Again, I have no idea what that is, but you can try that out as well. And if you want to know exactly what type of bass strings I play, like the 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 model and, and the gauge and everything, uh, I'll, I'll actually tell you right now. Um, I played the Dario EX, yeah, EXL 165. Uh, so those are 45 to 105. Yeah, 45 to 105, and I keep those on my precision bass and on my jazz bass, and that's like just my normal go-to sound. Um, on my five string, they're EXL 170s, so those are 45 to 130. 130 is my B string. Um, I also play chromes, D'Addario chromes. Those are the flat wounds, and those are probably 45 to 100. These, I think, are also 45 to 100, the nylon tape wounds. And I also have, <laughs> hold on, I have this bass right here. Wait. <clears throat> Um, this is another bass that has, uh, what are these? These are also nickel wound EXL light, super light gauge. So these are 40 to 95. And this is the only bass that I have with the lighter tension uh, that makes it easy for um, playing fast, I think. Things where I don't really need to dig in very hard. So if I'm playing solo um, or if I just want something that, that is lighter and easier on my fingers, this bass is strung up with lighter strings for that purpose. I'll put links to all that stuff down here in the description if you feel like checking it out. So anyways, thank you so much for stopping by here at thebasis.net. Make sure you swing by the website and check out our affordable membership pricing. And thank you so much for your support. I really, really appreciate it. By the way, if you want to follow me on social media, I'm on uh, Instagram and Twitter at Jamie Lewis. And on Facebook, I'm at Jamie Lewis Bass. And every Tuesday, if you've been following, I do this thing called hashtag Tone Tuesday. It kind of goes in line with what we're doing here with Gamma Tones. I'm just kind of messing around and coming up with neat sounds and, and showing you how I'm doing it. So follow me there and, and you can check out all that stuff too. All right, so take care and I'll see you next week here at thebasis.net as we continue on our quest called The Game of Tones. Hey, if you like what I do, please click on the subscribe button right here. And if you really like what I do, and click over here to see how affordable it is to join me at thebasis.net. But if you just want the free stuff, then click here to check out whatever YouTube's sophisticated robots think you should watch next. I'm sure they know what's best for you.